you are about to hear the worst Linux advice known to man. And you might be thinking, there's no way it's that bad. You've just got to be exaggerating. Well, let's see what it is. So this is a Reddit post from r slash Linux titled, Is Make Linux Fast Again dot com maintained? With the reveal of yet another side channel CPU attack being Hertzbleed, I'm guessing that Linux kernel developers will soon be adding some kind of mitigating code along with a kernel command line flag that disables the mitigation. On my personal laptop, I add curl HTTPS make Linux fast again dot com into my Etsy sysconvig grub because it's a single tenant machine and I don't need all these various mitigations for L1 and L2 cache snooping and stuff to be enabled. Okay, maybe I should leave them enabled, but I'm free to do what I want, right? Anyhow, I'm curious whether makelinux.com again is actually maintained, or was it set up as a useful gag years ago and then left to rot? Over the years, there have been a lot of really serious exploits patched in the Linux kernel. Things like Spectre and Meltdown obviously being the most notable, but many of these can be disabled through a couple of kernel parameters. And a couple of years ago, I believe back in... 2019 is when it was first made, this website came out, makelinuxfastagain.com, and all it is is this text string listing out all of these options. What these are, are kernel parameters that disable all of these mitigations. We'll talk about the mitigations in just a moment, but that's not even the really dumb part. Let's talk about the brain-crushing point that I don't know how anybody could actually write. Curl https colon slash slash make linux fast again dot com into my etsy sysconfig grub i've discussed plenty of times in the past about whether you should curl and install script into bash so you'll see a lot of git projects in the readme one of the ways you can install the project is curl this specific link which includes the install script and then pipe that into bash that by itself is already a bad enough idea, especially piping that into sudo bash, because that is basically a quick way to nuke your entire system if the script either doesn't download properly or includes like an rm-rf slash root or anything that could possibly just destroy your system. But that's one thing. Please keep random websites away from your kernel parameters. Let's imagine, for example, the site is actually updated. You would have absolutely no knowledge of a change ever occurring. You could completely change out all of the options and not even include any of the mitigations. But that's a pretty boring way to troll people. Do you know what's a lot more fun? Doing this init equals slash user slash sbin slash reboot. So if you don't know what the init option does, this lets you temporarily change your init system. I've used this to point at things like bash to go and change my passwords and things like that. But what if you just pointed at the reboot binary? Well, basically you put the system into a boot loop. And it's a boot loop that's not exactly easy to recognize. It can always be fixed if you go into your kernel parameters and like set the init system to something different. But if you don't know the parameters have suddenly changed, it's going to look like your system is broken for seemingly no reason. Now, boot loops are certainly fun, but what if you change it to something like this? Making your init system DD with the input file being slash dev slash zero and the output file being slash dev slash SDA. If you don't know what this does, so dev slash SDA is generally going to be your first hard drive unless you have an NVMe drive. And a dev slash zero basically is just zero. So this is going to replace dev slash SDA with nothing but zeros, effectively just wiping the drive. Best part about it is you can make these changes without making them visible on the website. So Firefox is going to have a user agent string, Chromium is going to have a user agent string, and curl is also going to have a user agent string. Basically, this just tells the site you're connecting to what browser is actually connecting to it. And curl is effectively just a web browser. So if you change this data based on the user agent string being used by curl, which can be modified, but out of the box is going to have a set user agent string, you can just destroy it without making it visible to everyone else. Now let's just imagine the dev has the best of intentions and is never going to become malicious. What if you go and generate your grub config but you don't have a network connection. 
Well, now you just have a bunch of random curl output in your kernel parameters. Most of it's probably going to be harmless, but if something actually lines up with a kernel parameter, it might do something really bad. Or if you have symbols in there that shouldn't be in your kernel parameters, once again, that's going to be really bad. Or what if the website goes down, or the domain is sold, or any other thing that could happen to a website that makes the output you're getting not what you expect to be getting. And now you just have a bunch of random unknown data being passed into your kernel parameters as if that's totally fine. On to the next point. Because it's a single tenant machine, a single user machine, and I don't need all these various mitigations for L1 and L2 cache snooping and stuff to be enabled. So there's two points here. First point being, if you're using Linux, most people are not really using a single tenant or a single user machine, because you're always going to have some processes that are running as root. But that's not even really that big of a deal. The main point being, though, these cache snooping mitigations stop processes from snooping on each other. So unless you're running a single process at a time and then wiping your cache and then opening another process, you still don't want processes snooping on each other even if they're all running as the exact same user. Because let's say you're doing something involving passwords or tokens or keys and there is some malicious piece of software running on your system that was doing this L1 and L2 cache snooping. That would be pretty bad. Now the main question here was the title, is this site still being maintained? So this site is actually hosted over on GitHub IO at this page right here. And as we can see, there is a pull request that was opened up in 2019 to speed up the page by about 700%. You can definitely see how, you know, serious of a project this was. But the last patch was in 2019, November 17th. Now, does that mean this doesn't include all the extra mitigations that may have came out since then? So we can actually go and check the kernel documentation and see what mitigations actually are available. So if we go down to mitigations equals, this is the set of options to disable various mitigations. So we have all of these options here, not all of them necessarily affect x86 systems. So I'm not going to read them all out, but if we go and check this against the list that is available here, most of them are available. There are two x86 ones that are missing. Those are this one right here, SRBDS equals off, and also this one here, MMIO stale data equals off. But here's the kicker. Most of this doesn't need to be here and is actually doing literally nothing because of mitigations equals off. So if you look slightly further up, mitigations equals off. Disable all optional CPU mitigations. This improves system performance, but it may also expose you to several CPU vulnerabilities. And this is equivalent to all of these separate options. So when he says, is this site still being maintained? No, but all of this doesn't matter. And every time there is a new mitigation, it is just put inside of this option anyway. The rest of this can just be deleted. Now, there's certainly a discussion we had about whether you should actually worry about some of these exploits. Most of these have been patched in the places where they're actually relevant, in places like browsers and things like that. You might argue that there are still some lazy developers out there who haven't fixed some of these, even though some of them have been around for literal years at this point. And all of these exploits are very well published and very well known about. So if anyone actually does want to exploit your system, they can do so if the exploits are available. But if you really want to disable these mitigations, it's your system, do whatever you want. So what you can do is go into your grub config. So in my case, that is going to be in slash Etsy slash default slash grub. Certain systems will move around, check it for which distro you're actually using. And then what you would do is modify this option right here. So grub command line Linux underscore default. And then anywhere in here, add in mitigations equals off. Once you've done that, all you do is just go and regenerate your grub config. And then everything is going to be good. The way you pass in kernel parameters on different bootloaders is going to be a little bit different, but pretty much every bootloader is going to let you pass them in. Now, you are totally free to do whatever you want, but that doesn't mean that you probably should. I'm not going to do that on my system. I wouldn't recommend you do it on yours either, but if you want to, do whatever you want. Now, I do have a sneaking suspicion this guy was trolling, and I just spent all of this time talking about a shitpost, basically. I really hope that's the case, 
but he never confirmed one way or the other. So if anyone saw that post and thought you should actually go and do that, please don't. It's a terrible idea. If you want to nuke your system, I can do it for you. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.